As you probably noticed during the game we played in the Understanding the Timing of Typography clip, it takes longer to interpret and read text set in small caps. That's because, as we learn to read, we actually stop reading common words. Words we see every day, we don't waste time and mental processing power reading like we do unfamiliar words. We memorize the shapes of words we know, the shapes of the letters and the shapes of the white space between and inside them. Humans are very visual, so we've got millions of word shapes memorized. When we're reading, we compare the shapes on the page against the stored pictures in our memories, and when they match, we recall the meaning attached to those stored images and move on to the next word. We only stop to examine the shapes of individual letters and letter arrangements when our memories fail to retrieve a stored match with the shape on the page. This process may sound slow, but the brain is fast. This is how we read, some of us at phenomenal speeds. Naturally, the pictures of words we store are mixed case, uppercase and lowercase, with lowercase ascenders and descenders, because that's the form in which we most often encounter words. When you set type in all caps or small caps, you prevent a match with the stored image of the word and force the reader to slow down and examine the word letter by letter, shape by shape. Thus, all caps and small caps lower legibility a little and readability a lot. Keep this in mind when using all caps and small caps. Both are great in the right circumstances and definitely have their places, but don't overdo it. And never set more than a couple of lines in all caps or small caps. When should you use small caps? Other than the aesthetic effect, as in the wedding invitation, using them in place of italics or bold is fairly common, particularly in longer passages of text. There are rules, actually, that say when small caps must be used for proper typography, two of them. They may seem strange to you, but that's only because they're unfamiliar. These are not new rules, nor are they old rules that no longer have a place. They're still in full effect in everyday professional writing, design, and typesetting. If they're unfamiliar to you, it's because you have been exposed to mediums and tools like web pages and word processors where small caps are not possible, or possible but only by undue effort, or to documents created by those ignorant of when to use small caps. As you saw, Illustrator makes small caps easy. In open type fonts with genuine small caps and with faux small caps for other fonts, so their use in your typesetting is possible and with ease. That removes the technical barrier. Here are the rules. You absolutely should use small caps in the following cases, assuming you have a font that includes real small caps, or you can make faux small caps that don't look horrible. I'll start you with the less jarring rule first. Use small caps for time and era abbreviations. The version in the top left corner is correct. Note the use of small caps for AM and PM, AD, BC, and BCE, which stands for before current era, if you didn't know. Now on the bottom left is one that's also sometimes correct. We'll discuss numerals in the next clip, but if your numerals are mixed height, as they should be normally, then use small caps. If you're using tabular or cap height numerals, then small caps time and error abbreviations might seem awkward. You can use all caps in those cases. The two versions on the right are both incorrect. Never use periods with small caps abbreviations, and unless you're going for an all lowercase look for all the text, don't use the lowercase with periods versions either. Now comes the hard and fast rule that doesn't have much wiggle room, but is often a big pill for people to swallow. In paragraphs of text and in titles, acronyms and all caps abbreviations of more than two letters should be small caps and without periods. The paragraph on top is correct. The one on the bottom is incorrect. The acronyms and dates are not the most important pieces of information in that paragraph. So why use all caps and cap height numbers that demand attention? We read seesaw, up and down, mixed case text, remember? Our numerals and acronyms too need to fit within that seesaw up and down framework of text. They don't need to be distracting elements that draw the eye from elsewhere in the text. This is the rule that always gets the most pushback from people because it's the one that's most opposed to what they see every day. Just remember what your mother told you. Two wrongs don't make a right. Just because you've seen it the wrong way a hundred or more times doesn't make it right. It also doesn't make me wrong. And you don't have to take my word for it if you don't want to. 
do a web search for small caps and acronym. If you want to produce professional typography with the best legibility and readability, use genuine small caps for acronyms and common abbreviations in titles and paragraphs of text.